Hey everybody, I'm Seth V, and today I'm here to talk about some of the best American-made EDC knives you can get your hands on. Let's check them out. So as I started to think about uh, knives to pull together to fit this theme, one knife came to mind straight away, and that's the Benchmade Bugout. I pulled the original here. There are many variants now at this point, some with upgraded blade steels, including CPM 20 CV, uh, S90 V. This, however, was the first one to hit the market with S30 V blade steel and uh, FRN handles. This knife is uh, $144 at the moment. And to me, I think it really kind of uh, represents and crystallized like exactly what it means to be an excellent EDC knife these days. Um, for one thing, the blade length measures in at uh, just over three inches of blade, about three and a quarter in fact, and uh, the size is just about perfect for most of the day-to-day -day tasks. It's really kind of a Goldilocks size range um, that has enough reach to give you enough blade length to do a little food prep, to get some good long slices in, and it folds up into a handle that's still a perfectly reasonably sized handle for almost everybody's hands. Uh, no matter how you grip this very simple handle shape, whether it's a pinch grip or a full fisted grip or you know any sort of reverse grip you can think of, it's just gonna work. It's simple, it doesn't get in the way. Uh, it is a tool, it's fast in and out of your pocket. Great, refined, deep carry pocket clip here. And of course, the axis lock for fast, ambidextrous, strong operation. Uh, it's everything you want in a EDC pocket knife. And, you know, I was going through Benchmade's catalog trying to find a better fit for 2022, but I still think, uh, and let me know if you agree with me, that the bug out is the choice for EDC from Benchmade's catalog. Moving on from Benchmade in no particular order, we've got a case Sodbuster Jr. here. And, this one kind of reminded me of the bug out in a way, because even though this design is very old fashioned, in fact, Case um, making knives out of Pennsylvania has been making them this same way for many, many years. We've got a lot of the same elements. Nice, thin, slicey blade, just like on the bug out. Polymer handles, just like on the bug out. And uh, a Goldilocks size. It's a little smaller but without a pocket clip in there and because of the thickness of these handles, you still get a very reasonably sized grip. And should it not be enough for you, there's also the uh, larger brother of this knife, the full-sized sod buster. In fact, really any sort of case traditional is gonna treat you well if you're looking for a traditional pocket knife that you just wanna toss in your pocket and uh, grab when you need to do a little bit of utility cutting. These are priced at $29.99 right now. And, uh, you know, to get down to that price point, we have a number of budget compromises here. It's a simple carbon steel, cases chrome vanadium steel. Um, some people do prefer that to the stainless steel. Uh, it can be a little easier to sharpen. And of course, it'll take a unique patina over time. Still, a great pocket knife, American made in Bradford, Pennsylvania, the same way it has been for years and years. Now, new for, was this 2021, 2022? Last year. Last year. This was a huge surprise because this is also a case knife. Uh, it's made in America right alongside their classic slip joints and it is as modern as they come. Uh, this is a uh, aluminum handled frame lock flipper with modern particle metallurgy steel S35VN. A uh, really usable, really well thought out, kind of tactical design. We've got a deep carry pocket clip here that almost buries the knife completely in the pocket. Action is super smooth. Um, there's a, a, a hardened steel lock bar insert in there to make sure that you're getting a um, good engagement and long lifetime out of this lock. I mean, like this is a checklist of all the modern features from a company that's sort of known for making things the same old way. Um, they did a fantastic job with these, and I haven't even mentioned the price yet because this knife is $135.99. Uh, 
I mean, when you consider the materials, the fact that it's USA made from a company with serious knife making heritage, ah, it's an awesome package. Really excited to see what, what Case is gonna do with their whole kind of new modern knife line. Really excited to see what's next. Speaking of surprises, the Gerber Fastball is a cool one. Um, this is the more recent version with the cleaver blade, also upgraded to 20 CV blade steel. These are $149 right now. And uh, I think the biggest surprise is the action on this. Manual, ball bearing flipper, liner lock, but it is phenomenal. Drops shut smoothly, just comes out with authority. It's very satisfying to use. And uh, you know, from a brand like Gerber that tends to focus on a lot more of the budget stuff, it's really cool to see a knife that's clearly aimed at the enthusiast, at the very passionate, you know, knife buyer. Um, I think the fastball, they really nailed it with this one. You know, it's a, it's a fun, well-made knife and it's still got all the things that make, a, make for an excellent EDC. Decently thin blade stock, nicely brown blade, that Goldilocks size, check it out here next to the bug out. Jeez, you know, maybe millimeters off in total, uh, total length, but yeah. An excellent choice, and I think my pick for EDC from Gerber. So, Spyderco. I almost, in fact, I had the Spyderco Siren on the table until just a few minutes ago, and I wanted to pick the Siren because uh, it's a USA-made knife that doesn't get as much love as some of their other stuff. It's newer, it's got LC200 steel, but it's a bit big and a bit too grippy and tactical maybe for an EDC knife. So I fell back to the one that people choose, the Para 3, because it's an easy choice. The Para 3 is an excellent EDC knife. I think it really, uh, even though it's a bit shorter overall than the Bug Out, I think it's an excellent competitor to the Bug Out. It feels similarly light. It's got a lot of the same features, quick, Deployment action, one-handed closing, the lock system that keeps your hands out of the path of the blade. Got an excellent deep carry pocket clip here. This particular version of the Spyderco Para 3 has Spyderco's proprietary CPM Spy 27 blade steel, uh, which is something they cooked up uh, as a bit of a, maybe a tribute to or improvement on uh, the classic VG10 steel. Um, Spy 27 should get you performance, I don't know, roughly equivalent to S30V. Maybe not quite as much edge retention, but a little more toughness, a little easier to sharpen. Um, it's an excellent day-to-day -day steel to live with. And here on the Para 3, it's just a package you're gonna want to use. Uh, this so far is about the thickest knife on the table. Uh, about on par with the Marilla, but so it, so it has a bit of a heavy duty feel, but thanks to that full flat grind and, and uh, aggressive distal taper, you still get a good slicey edge out of it. So Spyderco actually makes these in Golden, Colorado, USA Earth. It's written right there on the blade. They are very proud to be manufacturing knives in Colorado. They've built a whole production facility there. They've upgraded it and expanded it several times. And yeah doing phenomenal work. Not only is this USA made, it's a USA developed blade steel, USA made blade steel. There's a lot of the heart of the American knife industry built into this knife. And the same could be said for the Kershaw dividends. Um, I was going through the Kershaw catalog. Of course, I have to pick a Kershaw knife if we're talking about excellent USA made EDC knives. Um, the leak was top of mind. If we were picking based on sales, the leak would be the uh, Kershaw knife to be on this table. But I had to go with the dividend because I think it just shows off Kershaw's personality a little bit more. Each one of these American companies is manufacturing stuff themselves and they're really able to uh, do something unique with that. You know, if you have somebody else build your knives, you can build them ultimately only the way that that they can. If you're building them yourself, you can do stuff 
like this. Check out the way that these two blade steels are uh, welded here. It's actually a really thin line of uh, brazed copper or brass uh, holding together a CPM D2 edge for hardness and edge retention, all that stuff you get with CPM D2, and a uh, N690 spine for stainlessness, uh, toughness. You used to see this composite blade technology on a lot more Kershaws and even some ZTs, but uh, these days there's a, I think there's a leak with it. But the style on this dividend is just so, so cool with those teeth, uh, the uh, green aluminum scales. Definitely reminds me of a, I don't know, a World War II fighter jet or something with the teeth on it. Of course, you've got speed safe assist opening, so it is super snappy. Yeah, another Goldilocks size here, just over three inches of blade compared to that bug out neck and neck. Nice thin package, nice thin blade stock, deep carry pocket clip. You know, if you like what the leak uh, offers in terms of the clean design, the nice slim semi dressy look, the dividend gives you a lot of that with a bit more of some updated features like the tip up pocket clip, the um, it doesn't have a safety, secondary safety, like the leak does. So it's a little more streamlined and modern of a choice. I really like the dividend and I love this dividend with the composite blade, super sweet. Next on the table is from Kershaw's sister brand, ZT. Zero tolerance and I picked the Emerson designed 0640. This thing is awesome. I ZT is really known for their flippers, for their titanium frame lock flippers. They do excellent titanium frame lock flippers but I think this is my pick for an EDC knife out of their lineup. Um, it's a little big, it's maybe stretching some people's definition of EDC, but check out that profile when it's closed up. Nice and slim. It's maybe a little thicker than some of the other choices on the table yet, but you know, not out of line with your pair of three lightweight there. So it, so it hangs out in the pocket reasonably well. And what you get for the extra size and weight is a really, really excellent all around clip point blade made from 20 CV. These are $268 right now. We've got uh, an interesting kind of green weave carbon fiber scales with a nice little chamfer here toward the front of the handle. Bit of a two-tone finish on the blade with stone washed flats and satin bevels. Just a really clean look. Uh, Ernest Emerson, the designer, really knows ergonomics. Uh, simple, but still, you know, it flares a little bit here to give you some guard from the edge. And it's, it's very um, accommodating here at the back of the handle in case you need to bury it into your palm or hold it, you know, choked back, choke up. I really like the way this one feels in the hand and the action too, even though it's not a flipper, Man, it's sweet. The other thing with this knife is it's one of the few knives uh, in the zero tolerance catalog to run on washers instead of bearings. Unlike ball bearings, which give you really fast action, uh, but can get kind of gummed up if they get dirty or neglected for a long time. Washers are never quite as fast, but they stay smooth and, and are not quite as susceptible to dirt and debris. So if you want a hard use EDC made in America, I'd check out this Zero Tolerance 0640. Now we're gonna dial back the size, but still keep the kind of tactical attitude going with this ProTech SBR Auto. Uh, this one here, $220 with uh, S35 VN blade steel, and it is an automatic. This left-handed version is the only one on the shelf today, but these come back into stock quite regularly in different variations. Different colors of aluminum scales, some with micarta, different blade finishes. Uh, there's a lot for to choose from if you start looking, uh, but the design itself is exactly what you want in an EDC knife. Um, 
This one's a little chunkier, I would say, than a Super Slicer, like a Bug Out, but it's still got a nice hand filling grip, solid blade, and Protex. Amazing button fired action. Super snappy. <laughs> Just fun. It's even satisfying to hear. SBR stands for Short Bladed Rock Eye. It's a, uh, based on a custom knife by Les George. And it has a lot of the features that uh, make Les George's knives so popular. Nice guard, accommodating a finger groove there, and then a very simple handle that the rest of your fingers are gonna have no problem wrapping around any which way. Protec is making these out of Artesia, California, right there in the United States of America. I believe they just had an expansion too. So I think we'll be seeing more and more Protec knives with more regularity, which is excellent because I think uh, if you can carry an automatic knife, you ought to check one of these out. The next automatic knife on the table is from Microtech. There we go, just testing to make sure it still works <laughs> for my own enjoyment, of course. This is the UTX85, a slightly smaller version of the Ultratech that I think is just better suited for EDC. Let's, che let's check it out next to the bug out there. Yeah, we got those, we got those proportions, I think. A handle uh, that suits just about any grip. Not too big, not too small about uh, three and a quarter inches of blade. These have all the same features as the full-sized Ultratech, like the glass breaker on the end that holds in the reversible pocket clip. Of course, double action, super fast. If I was gonna pick one of these for EDC, I would go for the drop point shape, um, just for a little easier sharpening jobs down the line. And of course, there are lots of blade shapes available. Uh, Microtech does a great job with that. There's a Tanto, there's a Dagger, there's some crazy Hellhound, Warncliffe ones. Um, you can definitely spend more and get a crazier version of this. Uh, but this more, shall we say, vanilla version is $277 with M390 blade steel. No matter which blade shape you choose, you're gonna get that made in the USA quality. Microtech is making these in North Carolina, in fact, and they are uh, addictive. Addictive, yeah, they really are. Next up is the last automatic on the table. This is the Boker Plus Karakurt. Now, even though this says Boker on the blade, this is actually manufactured by Hogue, the uh, other big manufacturer of automatic knives here in the United States. Um, Hogue makes knives for SIG, H&K, in addition to their own line, um, which we'll get to shortly. But this knife was designed by Jesper Voxnays, and I really like it as a automatic EDC. Um, the handle is generously sized. I wouldn't say oversized exactly, but it's plenty big enough to comfortably get your fingers in the grip area with a fair bit to spare at the rear here. Should fit most hands quite well, I think. These are $231.21 right now with 154CM steel. The blade is ground with a nice high, flat, kind of a saber grind with a clip point here. Um, good mix of slicing power with a thin, reasonably thin edge, but still some strength. Carries the uh, thickness of the blade towards the tip. Just a great blade for everything, you know? And, uh, really puts it over the top for me as an EDC choice is this pocket clip. I happen to think it's a really nice kind of looking clip with the, that long uh, section taken out, but it's perfectly flush with the handles too. In fact, it's even lower than the handles, so there's just no way for the clip or that hardware to snag on your pants. And uh, thanks to the kind of gentle texture of these aluminum scales, still got plenty of grip on your pants and just a great experience pulling this out from your pocket and touching that bunt button and you're ready to go. Ready to cut with a excellent blade. Now, if it's a good deal on steel you're looking for, 
the Hogue Decca, I think, is maybe the number one choice, especially if you're just looking for a USA made knife. This knife is an excellent value. So with 20 CV steel and these Knife Center exclusive g Mascus G10 handles, this comes in at 165.71 right now. This also has the crossbar style lock, just like on the bug out for super smooth action and very strong lockup. Hogue called this their able lock and uh, it's every bit as smooth and easy to use as any access lock I've handled. One thing where I think Hogue has the edge, no pun intended, on almost everybody is their final edges. Um, not only are they almost always very consistent and symmetrical side to side, they just have an extra little level of refinement that I don't see a lot of companies doing. They're kind of polished um, and come just razor, razor sharp for sure. I mean, when you consider the price, uh, it's really cool to see that extra attention to detail. This is the upgraded uh, kind of second version of the Deca. It only has a couple subtle tweaks, so it doesn't really look like a different knife, but it does have a deep carry pocket clip and a few extra screws have been removed from the handle for a cleaner look. But other than that, it's the same great value, the same great example of American craftsmanship, the same great Elishowitz design. The Hogue Decca is really an EDC champ. All right, next we're going old school with the Buck 112. Uh, although this is kind of a brand new version, this version of the 112 uh, dropped just a few weeks ago here on, uh, or just got into stock, I should say, a couple weeks ago here at the Knife Center, and we are really digging it. This is the sport version of the uh, 112 Ranger, and I think it is, at the same time, the most modern version of the 112 that Buck's ever made, and also a version that's very, very faithful to the old school 112. They really kind of walked the line with this one, and I think they've done a great job. They took what worked about previous sort of modern interpretations of the classic 112 and beefed it up to the original's proportions. I, th I think that's what gives this, kni this knife its wonderful charm is that chunky handle. Um, it just feels like a brick in a good way. <laughs> uh, like you could rely on this for sure. And thanks to aluminum rather than steel construction, it's lighter weight than you might think. It doesn't feel light though. I mean, it, it doesn't feel heavy, but it feels solid. Um, little little brick-like for sure. And then the deep carry pocket clip has also been improved for this here. Uh, the hardware is flush, so it's not gonna snag, and the profile is a little cleaner in pocket than the kind of super wide clip we got on uh, the uh, Pro models from a couple years ago. So when you take modern elements like S30V steel, aluminum handles, deep carry pocket clip, ambidextrous thumb studs for one-handed opening, and you mix them with the traditional kind of dimensions of the Ranger handle, uh, what you're left with is an excellent, surprisingly tough feeling EDC folder. One other added bonus with this version of the knife you also get threaded hardware, so you can adjust the pivot on this thing. You definitely won't see that on an old school 112. Next up, we've got a bit of a newcomer to the knife industry, Meat Tour Knives. Uh, well, you may have seen them before. Uh, we've sold them for the better part of a year now, but Tour Knives is uh, based out of um, San Diego, California, I believe. Yes, based out of San Diego, California, making knives in-house. Uh, they started with fixed blades, and this actually is the latest version of one of their excellent EDC folders, and it just came through the door. Uh, we're already pretty impressed, I'll say. What we have here is three and a quarter inches of um, CPM 154 blade steel, titanium frame lock folder, with a new and improved deep carry pocket clip. The thing I like most about Tour Knives is just their attitude. I mean, the designs sort of speak for themselves. You know, you've got 
a very tactically um, inclined tanto blade shape here, I would say. Pretty simple handle that gets the job done. Um, comfortable, I like the, the flare at the end here that kind of fills the palm, even though the handle itself is pretty flat and pretty small. But I just like that Tor said, I'm not seeing any knives that I would carry, so I'm gonna build them. And they went to it and they did it. Um, you gotta respect that. And uh, you know, the knife industry welcomes them. I think that they are making uh, uh, these knives have excellent fit and finish. I love all the custom hardware. The, uh, the thumb studs are super cool. I mean, they're really making each part themselves in-house, putting it together, and uh, that that love for manufacturing shows through, I would say. Pretty sweet action. I think this is running on, uh, on washers. Yeah, definitely running on washers. These are $235 on the website right now, made in San Diego, California. This next one is particularly visibly American, the DPX Hest uh, American edition, they're calling it. As you can see, we've got the stars and stripes engraved into this titanium handle here. Pretty sweet, very proudly American made, um, designed by RYP, uh, which stands for Robert Young Pelton. He uh, is a, as I understand it, a knife designer, an adventurer, a sort of survivalist who started this DPX brand um, to make gear he could rely on. And this urban design is really sweet. Uh, I would describe it as feeling kind of compact, kind of chunky. The blade stock and grind here is definitely optimized for strength. This thing is a bruiser and it's meant to be. A uh, nice thick titanium frame lock. We've got a uh, glass breaker at the rear here. Definitely some kind of tough characteristics that give this knife an overbuilt feel. Great action. Um, I think this might be running on bearings. Yes, I see bearings in there. So it's gonna be crazy fast with the thumb. This knife also comes with some extra multi-tool-like functionality. Um, this lanyard hole doubles as a quarter-inch bit driver. The little hook on the blade here can be used to pocket deploy the knife as you pull it out of your pocket. Uh, I have uh, been told it opens bottles as well. And then the jimping here is, uh, I believe, a wire gauge. So you can actually use this to measure different gauges of wire. The overall package is simply excellent though. I mean, the fit and finish is really dialed in, perfectly centered, of course, and just a little chunky, tough EDC folder. So next up, we're going down to Georgia to check out Southern Grind. This is their Spider Monkey design, and this version is a Knife Center exclusive with layered orange G10 and black carbon fiber and a PVD coated S45 VN blade. This thing is a great choice for EDC if you're shopping at the price point. Well, this, ver this version in particular is actually on sale for $299.95, which is not a cheap knife by any measure, but I think it's, it's a pretty good price for how well this thing is put together. Um, I really do mean that every edge has been perfectly fit and flush. We've got custom hardware that they're making. Uh, you know, a, 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 this handle shape, in addition to the cool material, there's a lot of work that went into shaping these scales. Um, maybe a little difficult to see, but there's actually a whole lot of texture milled in here uh, so that you can have some extra gripitude when you go to extract this out of your pocket. Pretty nice little touch. The blade is running on phosphor bronze washers and it is very smooth. Nice custom thumb studs that kind of match with the jimping here. Yeah, overall this is, this is a knife with a really cool personality I don't think anybody but Southern Grind would make. And uh, that's why it had a spot here on the table. It's a sweet choice. And last on the table, also something of a newcomer to knives. This is the Bear from Tactile Knife Company. So we just 
added this brand to the website, oh geez, a week or two ago, but we've been carrying their pens for quite a while. Uh, Tactile Turn, the pen company, has been uh, turning pens in Texas, their Texas-based shop, and has really kind of built an excellent reputation. Yeah, taking it all in shop, doing it all themselves, and uh, knives were a natural next step for them. This little slip joint has magna cut blade steel, nice titanium handles. We've got very modern screwed together construction. It's uh, not a hard spring, but it's pretty crisp. It definitely uh, keeps the blade in place there. It springs back nicely. Good self-close. It's tough to do a traditional slip joint well in a modern construction method. They've pulled it off here. And you know, you can't say no to magnet cut, especially when it is this thin. I may be wrong here, but I think it's the thinnest knife on the table by a pretty decent margin. In fact, I'm sure of it. This is a, just a, this is gonna be a laser cutting through things. Uh, Super slicey, that magna cut edge is gonna hold for a long, long time and be extremely stainless to boot. So from Texas to Oregon, Colorado, North Carolina, and Idaho, everywhere in between, America makes a lot of knives. America makes a lot of good knives and these are some of the best American made knives we think you can get your hands on today. So if you wanna do that, Head on down to the links in the description where it'll take you over to knifecenter.com. Be sure to sign up for our knife rewards program while you're there so that if you put your money down on one of these knives, you can get some free money to spend on your next one with us. I'm Seth V and I will see you next time. Thanks and bye.